Um, I am Science Mom. And I'm Julie Soul from Soul Sparklets Art. And I see that we have Gamer Boy, Kylie, and Ellie. Hello to Corey and Hudson. And let's see, I see Ruby and Kylie and Maddie. It is so good to see you all. We are going to talk about dinosaurs today, and we're going to start with a dinosaur quiz. So just for fun, to see if you know what's a dinosaur, what's not a dinosaur, I'm going to show you 10 images, and I want you to put in the chat if you think they are dinos or not dinos. Hi, Hello Miles. Miles. I'm just Hi, seeing Miles. some other names that I recognize. I'm I'm just loving that I'm seeing everyone come in from both both um, your Facebook page and your YouTube and from ours too. So, so I'm just going to say something really quickly. I'm not that great at this quiz. So this is why for anyone joining from Soul Sparklets Art, this is why I was so excited to talk with you about this because I feel like you're going to set me straight. On, on a bunch of these, a bunch of these things. So, and, and I guess I should say I'm not a paleontologist by training, but I have a 10 year old nephew who knows everything about dinosaurs. I've talked with him and I've done some research and we're going to have a good time with this little quiz. So here we go. And hello to Ruby, Archer, Weston and Jade. I see Oscar. Hi, Isaiah and Kelly and Miles. So now it's time for you to shine your knowledge. Is a Dimetrodon a dinosaur? Yes or no? Put your answer in the chat, or if you're watching the replay, the recording, just answer out loud. And Julie, I'm going to make this quiz for you too. So what do you think? Is this a dino? Yes or no? I only recently learned that this one was not a dinosaur. That so when I think dinosaurs, I used to say this was my favorite dinosaur for everyone listening who knows more than I do. So now, now I know that I'm no longer able to claim this. And So good job, Ibrahim and Kylie and... Ellie and Karen, everyone who said no, that is correct. This is not a dinosaur. What about a triceratops? What do you think? This this one I'm pretty sure is a dinosaur. Yes. This I'll be is, really sad if this one is not a dinosaur. <laughs> this is absolutely a dinosaur and one of my personal favorites. Good job, Gamer Boy and Kelly and Jennifer. Yes, dinosaur. What about a pteranodon? You may have more commonly known these as pterodactyls or any type of petrosaur. Are these dinosaurs? Okay, I know this one isn't, but I just learned this one too. But I can't wait to get into why it's not. So I can't wait to talk about this particular creature. <laughs> we will find out the why in just a minute. And good job, Aaron and Jennifer and I see Sonia and several others got this one correct. Yeah, the pteranodons and or uh, petrosaurs, not dinosaurs. What about a stegosaurus? Oh, this this was my brother's favorite. So I know this is a dinosaur. Yes, stegosaurus is absolutely a dinosaur. They are super cool dinosaurs. And if you ever see a painting with a stegosaurus and a tyrannosaurus rex at the same time, that's actually not factually correct. They lived at different times, but this is most definitely a dino. Are you, are you telling me that the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus and the Triceratops weren't like a big happy family? No, no. They lived millions of years apart from each other. <laughs> How about the duckbills? This is one of my favorite dinos. It's really hard for me to pick my absolute favorite. Um, and I just gave it away. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's a dinosaur. <laughs> Now I know. Now, are these the really friendly ones, right? That ha are, are the good moms to their dinosaur babies? These are herbivorous dinosaurs. Um, whether or not they were friendly, I think is a little harder to say, but they did care for their young. And I like to think that, you know, if you found one in the wild, if you had a time travel machine, that you could just go up and like stroke the little bill and they would nuzzle you. But it's also possible that they wouldn't want you close to their eggs and they might headbutt you out of the way. So, so it'd be like ever... an angry swan. Yeah, if you ever go back in time, proceed with caution. How about the Brontosaurus? Or um, there are different names now for some of these, but this this family of dinosaurs, the long necks. No. <laughs> <laughs> just Michelle again. Yeah, and Michelle yeah, and that's commenting yes, on how easy <laughs> this yeah. quiz is today. All right, Julie, I think I need you to ask the question on the next one so I don't give the answer away. Okay, 
I'm ready. So the plesiosaur, which is different than the pleosaur, which I just learned are two separate because I used to marry those two creatures together. They're all creatures, right? That's that's the safe the safe term. So seeing a lot of yeses that this one is a dinosaur and some no's coming in now. Okay. More yeses than no's. So which is it? Is this it a dinosaur? Is, this is not a dinosaur. So not, good job to Kimberly. Oh, wait a second. It has the sore name. So we're going to talk about this. And good job, Jennifer Gonzalez. This is not a dinosaur. And we'll talk about why in just a few minutes. How about the Ankylosaurus? The Ankylosaurus has to be a dinosaur. It has to be. It's got the saurus. This one is a dinosaur. How about Megalodon? Oh, I'm going to let everyone chime in on this one before I tell my guests, because I only recently learned about this, that it's not. Not a dinosaur. Now we're seeing a lot of no's. Mega no says. Mega no. <laughs> Mega no is correct, especially because Megalodon lived so long after the dinosaurs. It is much more recent. It was not around during the Cretaceous or the Jurassic. It, it's a more recent prehistoric animal. And no. Ooh, the ichthyosaur. Okay, so now we've met a creature with a sore that isn't a dinosaur. That's right. The ichthyosaur so, is not a dinosaur, but it has a sore in its name. So how do we know if it's a dinosaur or not? How can you tell if an animal is a dinosaur? Now, see, this one I always thought was a prehistoric dolphin. It does look a lot like a dolphin, but with kind of a, a more elongated tail. Now, to answer the question of whether something's a dinosaur or not, I think it helps to ask an unrelated question. Oh, you know what? Oh, I this forgot. We have a two good more. One. And Our these two are Yes. Oh, okay. So the pteranodon's not a dinosaur, but this one, because we're learning about the feathers and the dinosaurs having feathers, I'm going to guess is a dinosaur. Yes, this is a dinosaur and it does look like a bird. And that is kind of a clue for our next one. So Archaeopteryx, most definitely a dinosaur. They were small, kind of like almost like chicken sized. And the first time that we really had like solid evidence that dinosaurs had feathers was from an Archaeopteryx fossil where you could actually see the imprints of the feathers. Chicken so size. So see, this is another one where I think our view of what this creature looked like can be so different because in my head, this is the size of an ostrich. Now, these, these were these were smaller, more like come up to your knee, knee size. What about an emu? These are alive today. You can find them in Australia. Are these dinosaurs? Oh, now see, to be a dinosaur, does it have to have lived a while ago or is it descended from a dinosaur so i'm gonna say a dino descendant dino descendant is a very good answer and michelle says dinosaurs turned into birds to answer this question of what a dinosaur really is we need to take a slight detour and ask ourselves what's a cat so julie would you say that these are all cats i would say they Unless, unless you're going to stump me on the next page, these look like all cats to me. Yeah, they totally are, right? Okay. So we have a house cat, we have a bobcat, we have a tiger. We call the big cats, you know, the wild cats. And there are lots of different types of cats or animals that are in the Felidae family. Is Are these cats a raccoon or a wolf? No. And when you ask people, why is a wolf not a cat? They might give you answers like, well, cats all have the same number of chromosomes. They all are able to retract their claws. They all have rough tongues. They have whiskers. They have these characteristics that make them cats. But the best answer is that cats all share a common ancestor. If you look at the family tree, some of the branches went extinct like saber tooth cats, but a lot of the branches changed they evolved to be different. And we have large cats like lions and leopards, the, the panthers. And then we have smaller cats that uh, some of them eventually became domesticated. Well, the same thing 
happened with dinosaurs. And the way that you can best define dinosaurs is the last common ancestor between what evolved into birds and triceratops, because those are sort of like the two ends of that family tree. So if you That's go back- It's interesting that that one is, because we hear about birds lately with all the new research, but not the triceratops. So I'm curious why that one is- I think it's because they're, they're sort of like the two ends of that family of animals. So they all share certain characteristics. They, they had teeth, they had um, a certain structure to their pelvis with their legs, they were quadrupeds, but they weren't the only animals that were around back then, right? There were prehistoric spiders and dragonflies and insects and small little mice-like mammals that lived during the Cretaceous and the Jurassic too, but the dinosaurs were definitely the dominant ones. And all the dinosaur friends that I feel like we think should be dinosaurs, but aren't actually dinosaurs at all. Yes. So let's let's talk a little bit about some of the questions that we were asking early. So if something has a saurus on its name, does that mean it's a dinosaur? So I noticed that when you went through that quiz, saurus always was, but soar wasn't. Sometimes wasn't. So it depends on the animal. If it ends with a sore, almost for certain, it's a prehistoric creature that lived during the Cretaceous, the Jurassic, the Mesozoic, those periods. Most likely it lived then, but if it was a fish-like animal, it's not gonna be a dinosaur because dinosaurs were not a fish-like family of animals. They were all terrestrial, except for one or two that would spend time in water, but none of them had flippers. They all had legs and claws, or at least toenails. <laughs> so we're talking about, because I think there's a fish that I remember seeing at the Field Museum, the, the Dunkel. I'm sure the kids oh, listen the right now. Series? Yeah. Yes. And I can't pronounce that. So maybe I need to... There Dunkel, were sor wasn't there a saurus on the end of that one too, or am I or am I misremembering this one? Math Dad, can you do a quick fact check for us and find the pronunciation of that awesome armored fish with the like bone like yeah. armor all over its body? Because I think the things that you know we often I feel like the things that live in the ocean are just starting to come to light because when we learn about dinosaurs or any prehistoric creatures, anything that lives in the water, um there is the pleosaur and the plesiosaur, although and one of the, oh, there we oh, go. Oh, no, he has it for us. Thank you. <laughs> Dunkleosteus. Yes, that one. And that is such an incredible, not a fish? It, it definitely a fish. It's so definitely there, a fish. Fish are so diverse and there were so many different types of fish that were alive at the time of the dinosaurs. And then we had this, um, not a dinosaur. There were a couple aquatic animals like our ichthyosaur, which is not a dinosaur, and like the pleosaur, the ape fish. And of course, there were some dinosaurs that ate fish as well. And you can see fish skeletons inside dinosaur skeletons. But we didn't have any aqu truly aquatic dinosaurs with flippers. Nothing with flippers. Well, that's an interesting way then, because I know we were talking about, like, how can you tell? So then if a paleontologist discovers a new dinosaur, or I shouldn't say dinosaur, if a paleontologist discovers like a new creature, so how, what do you think are some ways that they would look at to determine, is this a dinosaur? So they would look at the triceratops and at the bird and the structure there. And if it doesn't fall into one of those two camps with the common ancestor, then they would know it's something else at least. Yes, and we, let's go back to that cat and dog example. So if you found a, a, a skeleton, animal remains in the woods and you wanted to know, was this a cat or a dog? you would look at the teeth, right? Because cats and dogs have different numbers of teeth. And you would look at the skull structure because the structure of the skull is a little bit different between cats and dogs. 
And just counting the teeth, that would tell you if it's a cat or a dog. Well, similar for dinosaurs, there are certain bones in the structure of the head and in the structure of the pelvis that are unique to dinosaurs. So when scientists, when paleontologists find a new prehistoric fossilized skeleton, they look at the structure of the hips and certain ridges on the bones, and that's able to tell them if it goes in that dinosaur family or not. You but, really need to know the anatomy then of the dinosaurs, the, the two common ancestors to actually, like if you really, really were fascinated and interested and wanted to know more, and you really wanted to stump all your family and friends. If you learned the bird and the triceratops and you really studied the different skeletons, then you could pretty much use that and go and look at some of the other creatures and you could tell which one, which branch that it came from. You definitely could. You definitely could. Uh, what are some other questions we have real quick before we do our giveaways? I'm seeing if there's any questions from everyone. And Science Mom Amber has gathered a couple in our in our chat. Oh, I see. Are there any extinct fish? Definitely. Dunkleosteus is one, that armored fish. We don't have any of those anymore. And there are several others that that aren't around anymore. And I do have another question. So what's the proper plural? Is it sore eye? Is that what we're going? Uh oh, <laughs> I think it's still a I, I know I, I know I get into trouble when doing the octopus because it, there's you you can't change it to an eye, and I really want to, so I want to change it to to you know dinosaur eye. Yeah, no, I, I think it's if it's a Greek root, then it's sauruses. If it's a Latin root, then it's eye for the plural, and I think saurus is Greek. So that's my. So, so we're going with. <laughs> That's my answer. And then Jay for age five watching from New York has a great question. Are there any dinosaurs that are still alive? Well, let's take a look at that last picture with our family tree. And it all depends on how we define dinosaurs. If we say dinosaurs are extinct animals that all came from a common ancestor, then we would say no. But if we say dinosaurs all came from a common ancestor, then all of the birds are dinosaurs because there was just one branch of this family of animals that did not go extinct back at the end of the Cretaceous, and that was the theropods, and some of those evolved into birds, the modern-day birds. being the dino descendant, or yes. we can call it a, a dinosaur. dinosaur. Yeah, if you have chicken for dinner, you can literally say we're having dinosaur for dinner. Or if you have a pet <laughs> parakeet, you could literally say this is my pet dinosaur. I think that's going to be the takeaway from this from this entire live <laughs> is for all of you to um, be able to go outside and go dinosaur watching with your binoculars and your Audubon field guide. And uh... <laughs> that is right. And Megan says, we definitely call our chickens dinosaurs. I love it. The dinosaurs, really, not all of them went extinct. There was that one branch that evolved, got better and better at flying, tended over time to get smaller and smaller, and they're still around all over the world today. I love Emily's comment that chickens look like T-Rexes when they run. That is absolutely right. They absolutely do. Right. If you, if you look at, you know, a dinosaur foot and an ostrich foot, there's some pretty striking similarities. And if you watch like a cassowary or um, a sandhill crane, watch the way they move and then look at videos where scientists have tried to recreate how dinosaurs would move, there's some amazing similarities. And some of the noises that probably come out of their mouths too. I Yeah. Yeah. Especially... Um, I was just thinking before we hopped on here, there are hawks that just had babies and they sound like seagulls in the field, which I don't live anywhere near a lake or an ocean. So, um, but I can just imagine how loud and how beautiful that must have sounded with, it wasn't quiet, you know, it, it wasn't quiet back then. I think since we don't know, but it must have sounded like a rainforest in some oh, ways. It would have been amazing. 
And one, one last cool fact I have to share about dinosaurs, trying to figure out exactly how many species of dinosaurs there were is challenging. And some, some scientists have been trying to cut open dinosaur bones to see how old they are and then kind of match and merge species because they realized that sometimes we were looking at a juvenile dinosaur and saying, okay, this is this name of dinosaur. And then we'd look at the adult and the skeleton looks a little different. And we'd say, okay, this is a different species. But if you, if you can tell how old they are, then you realize, oh no, this is just a young member of the same species. So Weston had a great question about how many species of dinosaurs there are. And my best answer is the numbers changes all the time. And as we discover more fossils, hopefully we'll get, we'll understand more, but it's kind of an educated guess. And I have a question for you. One last question. So you introduced me to a dinosaur that I had never heard about. And this is what we're creating together next week on Wednesday. That's and right. that is a dinosaur with basically a little bit of a a little bit of a problem. I just can't imagine how this thing possibly <laughs> ate with a neck like this. So if you don't know, Science Mom and I are next Wednesday. We are going to have a blast. There we go. So Tanistrophius, Tani this dinosaur is currently my favorite dinosaur and it is on record for the longest neck of any animal ever known. Look at those vertebrae and how long they are. It makes giraffes seem like their necks are short. So I can't wait to have this discussion with you next week. So I don't want to ask you too many questions, but I'm really curious and I'm going to ask you next week, like how on earth do they not think they just found two necks? <laughs> <laughs> how do they know I that mean, they all the paleontologists are like, well, we're just going to keep connecting these and see how long we can connect the bones. <laughs> so I'm really curious to answer some of those questions and learn more about this dinosaur next week. Yes, and what did they eat? Creating one. And how do they have such a long neck? And I love the art that you came up with, Julie. This is going to be such a fun project. So next Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, we will be back to show you exactly how you can make your own fun dino stretch art project. And Julie, you had a giveaway to do, I right? Do. So we're so, going to do two giveaways real quick, and then we're going to wrap it up and be done. I actually have... Um, uh, I want to give a free month membership to the Glitter Bombers. So for those who don't know me, I run an art membership where we do lots of things, including dinosaur pro. Well, see, I can't say dinosaur project now because I was going to hold this one up. I'm like, not, not a dinosaur. So have to find, let's, okay, Fluffy. Fluffy is a dinosaur. This is, we got the Brontosaurus going. Velociraptor, we didn't go over this one. Also a, dinosaur. a dinosaur. Also a dinosaur. So um, I wanted to be able to give away um, two one-month memberships to a couple of um, lucky kids today to be able to create, because we just did, not a dinosaur bundle, because I wanted to do dinosaurs and friends. Um, but I don't know how. Do you, do oh, you have a rant yeah, on yeah, Will you put the link in the chat? So we're, we're putting a link in the, into the chat. And if you would like to enter for a giveaway, we have two month a membership to Julie's art club. And then- I'm gonna give away two if I can. Can I give two yep. one month? Like, can I have two winners? Yes. Instead of just one? Yep. Oh, for sure. Excellent. And then Math Dad and I are giving away a free um, biology class because we have a- full year biology curriculum that you can purchase on our website. And we are going to give one away to, um, to a lucky winner. So all you have to do is fill out the form real fast. Okay, so the form just landed in the chat. You'll have to open it up. It will ask for a name and email. And we're gonna have to give people a minute to, to sign in and then we will select the winners. But Math Dad will draw random numbers and then we'll just announce the names right here. So then you don't have to wait. You'll find out right away who the winners was. So I good luck, everyone. Wait. So, and for those who are already members, I know I have some members who are here today, then we will just cover 
that month for you. So. And then tell, tell everyone a little bit about what you're doing next week, Julie, because in addition to us doing this on Wednesday, you have other dino art, right? So this well, not dinosaur, but we're doing a dinosaur on Wednesday, but next week we're doing a free, awesome animal summer art camp. So we have um, a dinosaur, but we have also, we have a hamster on our, on the run in um, a little ball. We have a snow dragon. We have a peacock and I am missing the other one. Um, but we have every single day next week at 4 oh, p.m. Wow. Eastern, we are going to be creating animals and I cannot wait. And four of them were actually creating um, out of the membership this time. So anyone who isn't a member will get to um, create those along with us. Oh, see, some of my members are right now. The other one's a skunk. Awesome. Minding its business, taking a nice moonlit stroll. And which is Monica asks one link for both giveaways. We we yes. are we are just doing one link for both giveaways. But if you if you win, Julie, can I say this? If if someone wins the biology class, but they've already done it, then we, you can have art instead, and vice versa. Could we do that? Oh, absolutely. All right, absolutely. We'll do that. So we'll we'll email the winners, and then if you know you already have the Julie's art membership, and you're like, well, I want I want the biology class instead, you can just swap. All right, so we are going to draw four names and then we'll email you and you get to pick what you get. I think that'll be easiest. Does that sound good? That sounds perfect. Okay. Okay, so we've got 42 people. Our first winner is Jennifer Welch. Congratulations, Jennifer Welch. We will email you. Oops. Matt, that is randomly drawing numbers and then just picking from a spreadsheet. Okay, our next winner, Ooh. two, Yvonne, just, just on for, for first name is all we got there. All right. So, got Congratulations, got Yvonne. All right. Our next winner, five, Melanie Bopp or, or Tilia. Yay. Congratulations there. We got one more, right? And yep. one more. Final winner go. is Karen Hondrick. So Sophia and Olivia. Sophia and Olivia, congrats. Yes, congratulations to all of you. So um, so we'll email, right? And then they can select and you won't you won't hurt either of our feelings. So that um, I'm I'm secretly rooting for like everyone's gonna want biology, right? <laughs> My kids are actually taking um, science mom's chem chemistry club this this fall. So they are very excited. So Yay. we're excited um, too. Well, I'm really looking forward to this art project next week. Will you hold it up again, Julie? It's super yes. cute. I lost Fluffy. Uh-oh. What did I do with it? There we go. Okay. So, so this is also learning how to create a surprise. So cute. I know. So, and also... Um, Science Mom is going to teach us about the plants, uh, the plant life that lived at this time period too. Yes, because flowers are actually pretty recent. And when this dinosaur was around, there was no such thing as a flower. So we will, you'll, yeah, join us, bring your art supplies. It can be crayons, markers, anything you'd like. This and one's super easy. So markers, crayons, colored pencils. If you even just want to bring a pencil, that's you can totally do it fine. and color it later. You can do that too. So. And, and Julie will show us all how to do this. And while while we're doing it, I will have some really cool facts about the dinosaur for you. Can't wait to hear about that neck. And it's if it's not cute. a paleontological prank. <laughs> it's not a prank. It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. We will see you next week. Bye.